Right, here we are again. Um, part two. There's the drawing as we left it in part one. What I'm going to do now is really, really quickly. I'm not going to paint this carefully. I'm just going to show you my approach to um, to adding colour to this. Have a quick look at that. I won't be attempting to try and carefully replicate all these colours. I'm just going to be as loose as I can. And obviously one of the first colours I'm going to put in, I won't win any prizes for guessing, it's um, it's going to be up on these, on this fell here. Um, and it's kind of a, because when I took this photograph, it was in early March. So things were still fairly bleak. Um, so I'm just going to add some bit of artistic license and try and get an impression of the landscape rather than a, an accurate photographic go. And while that's still wet, let's pick up some, some greenery. Um, again, the colours, that golden colour is a mix of yellow ochre and quinacridone gold. Um, just drop some greens in. Um, again, I want to frame the drawing of the farmhouse rather than do a nice pretty landscape picture. Um, so let's come to the front while that's... I've got to keep my eye on that wash at the top because I want it to be... I don't really want it to be too dry before I go back in and do some more more colour to it um, although I have, I have to say today is a, a big change from the last few days when I've been painting over the last day last few days with these um, high temperatures paint was drying even even before I'd lifted my brush off the off the page, massive difference today. Um, it's cold. I don't know where you're watching this from, but yeah, definitely. Let's put some of this in the colour. You see, this is what I love to happen when I when I kind of do this. Um, I was tempted to think about my approach to this was to try and put some colour in this, but I think it kind of frames as you're kind of looking over um, over the wall and you can see all this stuff in the background. Right, that's that's drying off a bit there. Let's find some nice just dark colours of this is quinacridone sienna. Just drop it in to highlight there just provide some some texture really in the background and let's go out there um oh i've missed missed a bit there's a bit of a lawn there and i think from memory i think that's that's more of a cultivated piece of grass um so it it's slightly more It'd be lighter and not as as threadbare. But there's a shrub at the front of the house there. That needs some colour in. And um, up here, let's follow these lines. Um, I'm aware, let's have a look that my brush keeps kind of disappearing off off screen as I pick up bits of um, bits of paint. It's, I'm, I'm going to have a look at um, perhaps filming and including a, the palette in future videos so you can actually see what I do when uh, look this is that this is a Daniel Smith's um, undersea green that kind of granulates beautifully when you when you just 
when you, you go back in and you, you you don't you're not tempted to um kind of work with it anymore so just leave it alone let let the paint do what it has to do um i think i'll just put some here on there oh there's some and i keep coming back to this um that shape looks a bit odd so i'll pick up a finer brush what i'm going to do it's actually um there's some lakeland uh it's almost like a, a paved courtyard so i'll just put that gray on that's a, a shadow color that i had mixed um and it just gives a bit more sense of depth and i think while i'm there i'm going to use the same shadow color which again is in the, this is actually a uh, Daniel Smith shadow colour. It's Alvarez, um, Joseph Alvarez, it's a pre mix one. Um, and I quite like this. It's a good basis for a, for a shadow colour if I want to warm it up. Um, Let's have a look at it. See, this is the. I'll do it over here. Just move the book over. Look, that that's the that's the colour. Um. That's straight off the palette. There's no no other mix in there, so. That's a lovely basis. Now, if I want to warm it up, I put some red in. If I want to cool it down, I put some indigo in or cobalt blue. Um, and so I'll tell you what I'm going to do now. Just to try and get this finished. Um, it's a bit blue, but you know what? It doesn't matter my interpretation of the Lakeland stone root. Oh, picked up a bit of something out of my palette there. Um, this blue that I'm putting on now, it's a mixture of indigo and Payne's grey. Um, and I just want to, I think the, the blue is a fantastic i'm never sure if it's a complementary color or an opposing color to uh to the greens um but that's that's the only color on those buildings i want to do um no it isn't tell a lie john let's pull you back on screen and let's put some a matching color but a bit paler because it's further away and it's gone behind that tree there. Um, while this is damp, look, I'm just going to drop this bluey colour in to make a, a bit more of a, yeah, a bit more of a, a variegated wash and that square there I've just noticed that's there's a fence around um, almost like a lawn I don't know what it is but it, it's there and it kind of makes a bit more sense and I actually think that's some kind of compost thing that my friends is as much colour as I'm going to put on there um, I need to let it dry. I might do a bit more pen work, but that's probably as far as I would go with this this uh, drawing of this farmhouse in um, in Troutbeck. There's some nice things happening. There's some not nice things happening. So let me grab a bit bit of a darker. So with this really dark undersea green, and see if I can. Let's 
bring it down to the roof there. And this last bit I'm putting on, look, that's neat pigment. There's very little, it's only like damp pigment. It's very little, very little um, water in there. And I just want that to to give some kind of, I'm not, I'm not even looking at the, the reference photograph now. I'm just trying to make an interesting little feature there. It's a bit dark and it's kind of throwing that building forward. And there we are. That is that sketch um, of the um, farmhouse and trout back. Um, thanks for watching. And if you've got any suggestions of what you'd like me to see what you'd like to see me demonstrate or show in future videos, just drop me a line or a comment below this. Thanks again. See you next time. Bye.